I've talked about the road trains in Australia. Now I want to bring you another 164th truck found on the roads in New Zealand. The truck is similar to the road train, but it's much, much smaller. It is used to haul milk for the Fonterra Cooperative Group Limited. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and I like to bring you reviews of the most popular and unique diecast models made. So make sure you go on and subscribe to my channel. Our story today, it begins with a brief history of the dairy industry in New Zealand. Samuel Marsden, a Christian missionary born in England, traveled to New Zealand to bring Christianity to its Aborigines, the Maoris. His gift of a dairy bull and two dairy heifers in 1814 spawned the dairy industry in New Zealand leading to New Zealand's largest company today, a dairy cooperative named Fonterra Cooperative Group Limited. In New Zealand, the first dairy cooperative was established in Otago in 1871. Dairy cooperatives provide the main organizational structure for the dairy industry. By 1920, there were six hundred dairy processing facilities, of which about 85% were owned by cooperatives. Moving ahead to the 1930s, there were around 500 cooperatives, but after World War II, improved transportation, processing technologies, and energy systems led to a trend of consolidation, where the cooperatives merged and became larger and fewer in number. By the end of the 1990s, there were only four cooperatives nationwide. The Wakato-based New Zealand Dairy Group, the Taranaki-based Kiwi Cooperative Dairies, the Hokitika-based Western Milk Products, and the Tatinui-based Tattoo Cooperative Dairy Company. Moving back to 1923, New Zealand establishes its first dairy board. The dairy board assisted with the export of dairy products. Then in 1935, the government decided to take over control of dairy export marketing. In 1987, the Dairy Board Act was passed that gave the dairy board financial independence from the New Zealand government. Then, in 1992, the domestic dairy products market was deregulated to increase competition. And finally, in 2001, the Dairy Industry Restructuring Act was passed, which allowed the largest two remaining dairy cooperatives to merge with the New Zealand Dairy Board while still allowing open entry and exit from the cooperative and allowed raw milk available to competitors. That way they could maintain competition in the marketplace. Now we come to Fonterra. Today, Fonterra is known as the Fonterra Cooperative Group Limited. Fonterra was formed in 2001 from the merger of the two largest cooperatives, New Zealand Dairy Group and Kiwi Cooperative Dairies, with the New Zealand Dairy Board, which had been the marketing and export agent for all of the cooperatives. Initially, the merger was turned down by the New Zealand Commerce Commission, but later approved by the New Zealand government. New Zealand's dairy cooperatives now dwindled down from 600 to just three. Tattoo and Westland did not join Fonterra, preferring to remain independent. Fonterra has grown through acquisitions of other companies in New Zealand and Australia. Fonterra remains dominant in the dairy industry in the Southern Hemisphere and is continuing to grow market share worldwide. And this is the Volvo FM500 twin steer truck with a tank on it and a wagon trailer behind it with another tank. 
This is a common configuration in parts of Europe and in New Zealand. And you're looking at it here on the what we would call a passenger side, but in New Zealand this is the driver's side. They actually hitch up in the back and I've got it unhitched but it looks like it's hitched up so that we can take it apart and we can look at pieces one at a time. And we'll start off with the wagon. Now most places these we call them trailers but this style of wagon it's a trailer obviously it trails behind the truck but it has a fixed turntable axle underneath it for the converter dolly. It steers and you can see it steers just a little bit. Probably could have made it steer more, but they those fenders get in the way. And the dolly is fixed under the tank. It's not removable. They can't unhitch the tank from it. So calling these a wagon is a better description than a trailer. Because it's more like an old farm wagon would be. Now it has tandem axles on the turntable and it has tandem axles on the rear of the trailer. They are on Euro style wheels which are a little bit smaller in diameter than ours and they're painted all silver. It has duals with soft rubber tires and a nice tread pattern on those tires. Now we're used to a 164 scale that we're accustomed to is actually not really 164 scale it's bigger it's more like about 160 a scale so when you see a true 164 scale item it looks a little small compared to what we're used to and that's because the standard is off however this model is true 164 and those wheels and tires do look quite a bit smaller than what we're used to nothing to worry about they are actually right and true to scale and let's also not forget the European trucks run a little bit smaller diameter wheel and tire than we do anyway on our highway trucks. Now for the tank it has a clean out hatch down below and it has something up on top. I think it's just a sensor um, mount for the top of the trailer. It also has Fonterra graphics painted down the side. Really really fancy graphics on this thing. The tank is painted silver, the undercarriage is painted in Fonterra blue, as are the fenders over the rear axles and the front axles on the trailer. There's a little step right there on the, t on the draw bar. Now normally this draw bar would actually pivot up and down right at that point, but this one doesn't. That's okay. It does have a lunette ring and it has diamond plate uh, walkway there, so you can climb up on the step get there and check on the tank connect this hose which goes from this tank into the first tank on the truck and I'm not really sure why but it does and then there's another uh, hook up here and then there's a handrail there around to the back here look at those pretty cool graphics I turn often please don't overtake when I indicate that's a real safety thing because these trucks going on the farms, most of the farms are smaller and they do turn quite a bit going into the farms and those rural roads are narrow. You can see that yellow and red chevron pattern and then it has a speed limit sign that this truck is limited to a certain speed. There's an NDA placard on it and then there is also a number bar down below for the license plate right there. Then you can see it has individual jewel style brake lights, turn signals, and backup lights on it right there. And then to get the colors it's just clear plastic and then they use a Tamiya uh, clear yellow and clear red and paint them. Really cool way that they do that and it makes it look like actual lenses instead of casting them and that just makes it look like they're too solid this makes it look like lenses. There's also turn signals and brake lights which are individual pieces up on the tank. Oh, one other thing. There is the mud flaps. They're part of the fenders so they were right there but they painted them white. Really cool. Coming over here on this side of the trailer or the wagon I should say 
You've got more Fonterra graphics with the Fonterra tank logo in the back. And then you have your nice wheels, tires, and then the structure underneath. There's also a rib there and there to add tank structure support because milk is heavy. Top of the tank, you can see this hose. It's black. It goes up into the silver part of the hose that goes into the tank. And then you can see that sensor tank right there. There's also a little bit of hand railing up there around that piece, probably so you can hang on and look in. Underneath, there you go. You can see the tread pattern on all the axles. You can see not really much of a suspension or any detail there. And these were made specifically for Fonterra and only a few were brought over to the U.S. Around to the front, you can see there's another uh, tank logo, or there's another tank number for the wagon number. You can see the front of the fenders, you can see the tongue, and then you can see that hose. Also, you can see the little teeny tiny Lynette ring for the pinnel hitch. It's not exactly a pinnel hitch, but it's close. It's a locking hitch that goes in, and it's pneumatically locked. Their hitches are pretty impressive. And they don't require having to have uh, tow chains hooked up like we do over here. Really cool. A really, really nice wagon to haul that milk from your farm. Now let's pick up the tractor. Well, the truck. These are more of a truck because they actually have the tank than they are a tractor. They do have the hitch to haul the wagon, but they can operate solely on their own. On this side, which is the driver's side, you can see the steering wheel inside and it's right next to the door to show that it is a right-hand drive truck. It has duals on the rear and singles on the two front axles and both of those would be steer axles on the real one. They don't steer on this one, but that's okay. You can see how they got the silver wheels. On this one though, they painted the center caps light blue to match the Fonterra blue. Fenders over the three axles are blue, and then they've got the white mud flaps there. It has control boxes here, air tanks, and other controls there. There's a hatch for clean out of the tank, and then there's other connections here, here. And there is the connection that connects to that hose on the wagon. Not really sure why, but that's what they have. You can see hoses up here. And that would probably be a hose that pulls out and goes over to hook up to the uh, tank, the storage tank at the farm and fill the tanks. Also on this side, you can see very common down there is a large whip antenna because the areas are very remote and still rely very much on utilizing radio instead of phones and other things to connect with home base and the farms. There's also the exhaust pipe, and you can see the uh, exhaust pipe coming out, going around and out of the engine. Now, we'll turn back a little bit. You can see the basics of the air intake is right there, the air cleaner, and there's a little bit of the engine. There's no actual tilting hood, so the full engine is not under the cab, but that's okay. Also, you can see the back window. Now, note, it doesn't actually have a back window behind the driver's seat. It has solid metal. That's kind of cool. The window is just behind the passenger seat and what would be the middle seat if they actually had one. That's really cool. The side of the tank has Fonterra Dairy for Life graphics, and the striping matches up and mates up with the striping on the tank to really connect, make it look like it's a good set, a match set there. It has Fonterra, Dairy for Life, on the door. It has a truck number right there. Door handle is tampoed in black. Steps are, are, and this piece are black. And then the treads on the steps are silver. It has the FM500 logo right there on the back, right behind the door handle. There's a hard ABS plastic mirror and a hard ABS plastic uh, visor, and those are in black. Let's go around towards the front here. You can see the seats inside. 
You can see the Volvo Tampo there and the Volvo logo Tampo there. The number plate, which is their license plate. Headlights, marker lights, and these extra lights are all individual jewel style lights. Windows are hard plastic and the windshield wipers are actually hard plastic and they are separately applied pieces so they're extra. Now you can see there's a steering wheel and then the seats. Also there's both of those mirrors right there on each side. Really nice detail they did on this truck. And the bumper is Fonterra blue. Really cool. Cab doesn't tilt as I said before but there you can see there is the actual air intake and then it goes down on those pipes this rectangular uh, pipes right behind the cab that are black and then there's the exhaust with a little heat shield on it now that's molded into it and then tampoed with the black dots here's more parts of the exhaust system and Volvo is tampoed right there and then that's where the hose would be that they pull out and hook up to the regular to fill these tanks at the dairy farm there's more hoses and pumps right here that go up and into the tank. Volvo 500 logo there, Fonterra Dairy for Life, steps, and the uh, door handle. There's the mirrors. There's also another little mirror right there above the door. That way you can actually see what's beside the truck. Very useful on these country rural roads that these trucks would be going out and picking milk up on. There's your large fuel tank there. Duels, singles on the front, steer axles, really nice detail, and the Fonterra graphics on the tank. Around to the back here, and you can see there is the European style wagon hitch that hitches up to those turntable axles. They, you line up with your air, your height, to the wagon axle, the wagon pintle. You line the two up, you'll have to adjust your heights with your air to make sure they're right. Then you back in, blam, the pin goes down under pneumatic pressure. Then you come out and you set the lock and you're done. And then you hook up your uh, air lines and your electric lines, but you don't have to bother with tow chains. These are a very good thing. We really ought to adopt them here for our doubles. There's the truck unit number. Uh, more you can see the uh, hose where it hooks up into the rear and it goes there all the way underneath the truck there's a hose that comes out but that hose goes underneath the tank comes around and goes into this which must be the pump system and then finally it goes around over to following it there it goes down around here and then it hooks up into this hose, which goes out to the uh, farm, or it goes to this hookup, which is probably where they, uh, no, that's not the hookup, that's just a step. So that's how it gets from there into the rear tank, just like that. That must be how they run these trucks. Back here, you can see the number plate, and then the individual jewel style uh, brake lights, turn signals, and backup lights that are again molded in clear plastic and then painted with that clear yellow and clear red. Really nice way that they make that. Slipping underneath this truck and we have spring suspension on the first and second axle and then air ride on the rear axle. Looks like there's a gear reduction from the Drive shaft off the transmission into the first that differential and then rear differential drive shafts between both. And you can see it has the awesome die cast casting, or it has the Volvo casting there and other information. There's the bottom of the air tanks, bottom of the fuel tank. Really, really nice job overall they did on this, especially considering it was done for Fonterra only and it was run two times and then hasn't been run since it's a very truck specific item now let's go on and hitch him up 
carefully because of the way they hitch. There we go. And hook up that hose. And you can see it has nice free rolling wheels. It doesn't have a tilting cab or steerable axles or opening doors, but I'm not going to complain. It's a very unique piece that belongs in our collections. And that, guys, is the Volvo FM 500 straight truck with wagon, both tanks for Fonterra Dairy Group Limited of New Zealand. And this was made specifically for them, and very, very few ever made it up here to the, the U.S., so if you could get your hands on one of these, you're really, really going to enjoy it. It's a die cast and ABS plastic model in 164 scale. I think this is an awesome little model that is quite unique for your collection. Since I want your collections to be filled with items that are going to go up in value, and not just the run of the mill that everyone else already has, please grab my report on tips for valuing your collection with the link in the description below. And as always, please go on and smash that like button to really help me out with the algorithm. And subscribe for more great videos on Diecast and the histories of the real companies like this one. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill. And I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.